Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're exploring all the translated fiction novels that I read in July. You can also jump ahead to the particular books that you're interested in rather than having to watch reviews for all of them. So first up we have got more Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa, translated by Eric Ozawa, who also translated the first book, Days at the Morisaki Bookshop, which was a favorite of mine last year. And this book very much um, carries on where the first one left off, exploring the heartwarming world of books, family and personal growth in Tokyo's Jimbocho neighborhood, which is a neighborhood that has got loads of bookshops and I loved returning to that area and specifically to the Morisaki bookshop and the owners, the uncle, the uncle's wife and our main character from the first book and continuing their personal journeys of growth from that first book. Themes of family, love, grief and healing are so beautifully portrayed and then I have the downsides unfortunately because the slower pace really worked in the first book to let us get closer to our main character, whereas here it doesn't work quite as well. And because it continues the stories of the individuals from the first book, it very much has that sort of middling book feel. Nothing much happens for the first two thirds of the book until the final part. Um, so that was a little bit of a letdown, but don't let me deter you. It's still a really decent read. It's a slow slice of life story that deals with grief in a really touching, relatable way, while also celebrating the joy of human connection and reading. Then on a lighter note, we have The Bookshop Woman by Nanako Hanada, translated by Kat Anderson. And I've recently reviewed this um, as a single book review, but this will be much shorter. It's charming, heartwarming. It's a memoir exploring the transformative power of books and self-discovery. And I love those books about self-discovery. And this one's done really well in that memoir format. At a turning point in her life, Nanako joins a meetup site, Perfect Strangers, branding herself Sexy Bookseller, who gives personalized book recommendations. And she gets some dodgy people contacting her, but it also leads to unexpected friendships and a renewed passion for books. So I enjoyed the narration of this. Nanako is likable and quirky as the person telling us the story and uses humor and honesty and that makes her journey feel intimate and engaging. The idea of um, joining a dating site, meetup site to offer book recommendations is also unique and captivating so I thought that was quite cool that she actually did that. Uh, Nanako's transformation from feeling lost to finding new friendships and rekindling her love for books is beautifully portrayed. So I really enjoyed this book. Um, and the bonus is you get an extensive list of book recommendations uh, from her. As you're reading, she meets all these people, she gives them their recommendations and why she's recommending it, and you can take notes. So downside. Very, very minor downside. At times, the pacing does slow down quite a bit when she's thinking about the people that she's meeting. And the introspection is good for us getting to know her, but I think there's one or two scenes that could have been chopped and would have made it even more engaging. But on the whole, it is a delightful, light and touching nonfiction book celebrating the joy of reading and human connection again. Next, we have The Kamogawa Food Detectives by Hisashi Kashiwai, translated by Jesse Kirkwood. And the book was quite different from what I was expecting. It is very much food based and it does say it in the title, so I don't know why I didn't think that. The mystery is more around finding out the ingredients of some mouth watering, watering culinary experiences. Um, it's set in a cozy corner of Kyoto. 
Now, I love the idea of a food detective agency. It's unique and it's captivating. Um, vivid descriptions of Kyoto create a rich and immersive backdrop and they don't just stay there, they move about. So when people go to them to say, I am looking to recreate this dish that I remember because of blah, uh, they go and do their research and it's fantastic. There's a lot of character development. Each character has a distinct story and their interactions with the um, main characters. Deeply, deeply touching. Um, Mouth-watering descriptions, detailed descriptions of the food. And the minor downside, I guess, is a bit of a fragmented structure. Um, interlinked episodes might feel a bit disjointed to some readers, but not to me. Also, some people don't want to hear about, you know, detailed descriptions of regional Japanese dishes, but um, I think the balance is really good. So I didn't mind that at all. Uh, the Kamagawa Food Detectives, I just thought was such a delightful, heartwarming read. It's joyful. It's full of yummy food, bringing us closer to the idea of these tastes bring back memories they bring back memories of times places and the people that we love and i thought that was really well done so i am super excited for the sequel that is being translated into english later this year then we have the salmon who dared to leap higher and this is by An du hyun um, translated by deborah smith and deborah smith uh, often translates things for and I'm hoping I'm not making this up. Oh. No, I'm not. Uh, she often translates for Han Kang, and she is a um, founder member of Tilted Access Press. So the translation was really well done. This modern fable tells the story of a salmon with silver scales who defies the predictable life of his kind, exploring themes of growth, love, and the pursuit of dreams. So this is a novella. It's um, short, it's sweet, it delves into the meaning of life, death, and our relationship with nature. It's thought-provoking, and it's got some cool quotes and reflections um, that add depth to what is, in essence, I guess, a simple narrative. Minor downsides, I think that the language, although this book is clearly really well translated, I think the language is really simplistic. It sort of reads like middle grade, and that isn't a huge downside. To be honest, it's quite a relief sometimes to read something that just uses easier uh, wording. Um, and yet the message is profound and poignant about the circle of life, so it's good. Uh, thought-provoking and offers a unique perspective on life, nature, and human impact. So yeah, cute story. Miss Kim Knows and Other Stories. Now this is a wonderful range of books and I actually first heard about it from Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Um, this book by Cho Nam Ju is translated by Jamie Chang and is a collection of eight short stories exploring the lives of Korean women from various walks of life, ranging from 10 to 80. And if you remember, Cho Nam Ju is known for her international bestseller Kim Ji Young, born 1982, which once again delves into the multi faceted experiences of women in contemporary Korea. So I loved that we were going back to the style because for me, Cho Nam Ju's uh, book in between, I think it was called Saha, that really didn't hit the mark for me. I, I might go back to trying to finish reading it, but as a sort of sci-fi dystopian um, book, I just wasn't feeling it. So going back to the style really, yeah, was a joy to read. I enjoyed the diverse perspectives. Each story provides a unique glimpse into the different stages and roles of women's lives. So I enjoyed some stories more than others, but they were each, um, each had something unique to say. Uh, sharp so social commentary, tackling pressing social issues, including domestic violence, workplace discrimination, and gaslighting with clarity and insight. The characters' experiences resonate on a universal level, highlighting the shared struggles of women across cultures. 
I also found that Jamie Chang's translation maintains what must be a directness and clarity in Cho's writing. It's a powerful and compelling collection that sheds light on the varied experiences of women in contemporary Korea. So for me, Cho Namju has continued her vital voice in literature, offering stories that are both culturally significant and just so universally relatable. Um, I think this is a good pick, actually, for Women in Translation Month, for anyone who's doing that. So have you read any of these translated fiction novels, and what did you think? Let me know in the comments below, and let me know what you're currently reading. I've just finished reading an arc for Yunam Dong's Smiley Laundromat by Kim Jion, translated by Shana Tan, which is a cozy Korean novel that is out in August. Um, I'm also currently reading a couple of fantasy novels and Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck, or Jenny Erpenbeck, which I'm listening to narrated in German by the author. It was accidental as I thought I'd gotten an English version, but it's giving me much needed German practice. So next on my list is Goodnight Tokyo, which I left downstairs. I'm so disorganized. Anyway. It's got a lovely cover. I'll put the picture somewhere. Um, I only got it yesterday, so I'm super excited to dive into it. It's translated by Hayden Trowell. Trowell? Yeah, I think so. My next videos are in my fantasy sci-fi um, genre, so it will be a Friday wrap-up of all the fantasy and science fiction that I read in July. Um, I'll do all of the other genres outside of translated fiction, sci-fi, fantasy uh, on Sunday, wrap those up. Um, I'll be reading for Women in Translation Month, so that's definitely going to take up a lot of my reading for August, but I'll still mix in some of my fantasy favorites. For giveaways, it struck me that I didn't celebrate my 750 subscribers reaching that way back in April. So in my last video, I had offered a celebratory $25 gift card giveaway, and that was one. Uh, and congratulations to Jack from Spread Book Joy. So ta-da! My next giveaway is for a couple of physical books. So I'm going to keep that open to just UK entrants because I've just been caught out a couple of times in the past with books that I've sent abroad um, to Germany and Austria and the Netherlands. And <laughs> each time they got caught up stuck in customs. So we'll stick to the UK for this. Um, so the August giveaway is for two translated fiction books. We've got... Ito Hiromi's poetry collection, Killing Kanoko, and Wild Grass on the Riverbank. And I haven't read it, so it's brand new. I got it from Tilted Access maybe two, three years ago. And I intended to read it because I was trying to get back into poetry, and then I never did. So rather than it just languishing on my bookshelf and me not reading it and not getting into poetry, it's up to grabs for someone who's into translated fiction and into poetry. Then we have a book that most people know, The Vegetarian by Han Kang, and I always mean to read this. Instead, I've read her other books, uh, more recent ones, The White Book, which I loved, and uh, Greek Lessons, which I really also enjoyed. And then this one that is so critically acclaimed and won the 2016 International Booker Prize, because people keep telling me about it, um, I, I've just been so put off. <laughs> So I've never started it and it's also brand new so that is coming off my shelves as well. Those two books are up for grabs and you have until the 20th of August to enter so just leave a little um, gift box emoji in the comments and I'll know that you want to be entered. And that concludes today's reviews and catch-ups. I hope you found some new books to add to your TBR. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell for more book reviews and literary discussions and just to be notified of what's happening with the channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy reading. Until the next time.